other day I discovered that we do have a leak that I thought was isolated to underneath of the slide and also the discoloration on the carpet that we ripped up is because of the leak that's happening now. I had the valances just sitting over here on the slide just out of the way. This is dry and this is soaked and it was leaning up against the back wall. A lot of you might be thinking, well, Dennis, you spent, you know, all that money on an RV physical condition inspection. Um, how come your inspector didn't catch this? And I kind of have the same question, but to his defense, this was all covered. There was a couch over this that he's obviously not going to pull the couch out to check for anything underneath of that. Um, it wasn't raining the day that he went there to inspect the RV. If there's no red flags, then you don't really dig any deeper. We've obviously started ripping things out and it's been raining torrentially. So the red flags are popping up now. There would be um, no way for him there, to have no Yeah, I've actually, I spoke with a buddy of mine um, who, is, who is at the end of getting his NRVIA inspection and kind of sent him some pictures and was like, yo, why, you know, would you have caught this? And he was like, well, if it's covered and there's no red flags, just like I said before, you're, no one's going to know. It's, this is stuff that unfortunately for us was easily missed because it was buried so deep. Just so y'all, you know, have a heads up if you're going to go the route that we've chosen and buy used, uh, just sniff around, look at any blog that or vlog that's gone through a renovation. And this is something to plan for. Um, you know, luckily we bought this coach at the lower end of the retail pricing according to NADA. So, you know, it's not something that we want to be spending the money on, but, you know, we built that into the budget when we bought the coach that, you know, just for unseen, who knows. It looked clean enough that we didn't expect a leak, but you should probably go ahead and plan on there being a leak of some sort in the used coach that you're buying just to be safe. You know, plan for the worst, hope for the best. That's kind of what we did here. And I know I'm I'm Eeyore right now, but because I don't really want to have to deal with this, I'd rather build my couch in my desk and take my first trip. But the th it's got to be right before we leave. So this is just another little speed bump that we have to get past. It'll work out. So we're, as you can see, we're underneath the slide of the new RV. Um, I just kind of wanted to point out that the the inspector that did the physical uh, inspection actually did take pictures and notate this rust on the corner here that you can see. Um, but even I would have chalked this up to just external weather exposure. The other side of the slide that's not having the issue is kind of showing some signs of wear in the same spot. Um, so that wouldn't have red flagged me either. I was thinking, you know, just a little bit of uh, a little bit of paint, a little rust-oleum would fix that problem. Another reason that I think that he didn't catch it is the underside of this slide is actually a really thin um, sheet of aluminum, which I'm kind of into because it's not going to rust and it's metal. It's not plastic. It's not that waterproof just sheeting that they put underneath a lot of the newer RV slides like the grand design we had, which there's nothing wrong with that. And in this case, I kind of wish we would have had that because it would have sagged and shown the water damage that was that is happening above um, from the outside and we probably could have caught it. All right, so it is raining like cats and dogs outside. And I just wanted to show you guys that found the source of the leak it's actually not where I thought it was it is the window and it is leaking like a sieve and then it is puddling under the slide which that's a slide floor and then puddling up over here bummer we are looking at the corner of the window in question and we've realized after pulling off the beauty ring that you can actually see daylight right here that's what this little white line is 
And there is a rubber gasket that's supposed to be contacting the wall outside the coach. But whoever installed this window in the slide room cut the hole too big. So it's actually not touching anything. And the only thing that's been sealing this window for the entire life of this RV has been a little bead of silicone on the outside of the window frame. Yeah. And now that it's failed, it's just leaking from the corner up here where the gasket doesn't seal, running down the edge of the window to this luckily waterproof trough here. And then puddling in the frame and coming down to where there was a break in the seal over here and running straight down the wall to the slide floor. Jesus, flip and fly. Wow. Because none of that's like over here, it's, it's a little spongy, but it might not be once it dries. All right. So we're getting a little off track here, but the goal today <clears throat> is to take the window out of the slide and try to shim it to correct the angle that it's sitting on. Another thing that I'm trying to do is get this trim panel off the wall so I can peel back linoleum uh, underneath the forward corner of the lower part of the slide uh, to see how extensive, hopefully not that bad, the water damage is underneath the linoleum. In true RV manufacturer style, <clears throat> this part is screwed in from the outside, which is nice. But then they screwed a finish piece onto, I don't know if you can see it, the inside of this but then upholstered over the screws so i can't just remove it i have to peel it off and then i can get the trim panel out of the way so it's taking way longer than it should but that's where we're at i'm trying not to totally mess up the fabric so we can reuse it, reuse it but it looks fine right now yeah yeah i know it's i mean it's going to be kind of lumpy because of this uh -huh. uh, cushiony stuff underneath if it's going to be all torn up, but uh -huh. it is what it is. Can't do anything else. Slides through this linoleum like this right here. Like butter. Because it's linoleum. Edge of this bad boy. And then we'll cut all the way over here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely moldy. It's definitely black mold. Worst of it's definitely gonna be right here because this is where it was puddling. Uh -huh. um, but it definitely, just like this, it went back up to the kitchen because the wood is absorbent, so it kind of sucked it back up the wall. The other way, it's gonna do the same thing here. The cool thing about it is um, Fleetwood actually used plywood and not particle board. Um, so it didn't rot out like the particle board would. Like particle board, as soon as it gets wet, it turns into a sponge, it expands because it's all, it's just chunks of wood that are glued together. This is actually a sheet of wood, all one piece. So it can stand a little bit more moisture than particle board can. Yeah, that's gross. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's just concentrated to around the slide. I think since it's not like totally soft, it's moldy because it was trapped, the moisture was trapped underneath the linoleum. Um, I think we can dry it out and try to do some mold remediation and uh, just clean it up real good. And I think we might be all right. We might not have to replace it as floor. Or wall. So basically right now, I'm just cutting through the old sealant and then once I get it down I'll scrape and clean all the this is this hole there's another huge gap right here the window's about to come out now 
yeah this window had zero might as well say sealant around the top of it basically what i'm doing is i don't know if you can see the scraper coming in from over here but i'm just getting behind where the gasket the seal is inside of the frame getting it off the wall so i'm just gonna run the scraper behind the window window frame until i get to the other side and then it should start Wanted. There it is. It's out. This is what we're about to replace with some butyl tape gasket, automotive gasketry for windshields. But if you look here, you'll see that there's little bits of paint evidence. You can tell where it was actually contacting the side of the RV, and then all of a sudden, from right here where all of that pinch is and then where it turns into clean it looks like fresh um gasket like it's never been squished is a giant gap that's actually a defect from the uh from the factory because somebody rounded that corner too high right there luckily shane came to the rescue and gave me a legit scraper so i switched to the metal scraper don't ever bother with the plastic ones they're garbage even if you're using full body paint. As you can see here, I tried to get at it with a razor blade with awful results. Just get you one of these and be done with it. I'm finishing getting the rest of the bionic sealant off of the sill of the window here. And then as I'm doing that, I'm going back over it with some mineral spirits. Just go straight to the mineral spirits. Don't try to do it with denatured alcohol because the denatured alcohol won't break down. It's good for like a finishing cleaner. You use the mineral spirits first, then go back over it with the denatured alcohol um, to kind of give it a clean dry finish after the mineral spirits. Um, but I don't want to go too far into how to install a bit, how to install a window because there's plenty of way better videos on how to install an RV window. Check out the RV geeks, check out RV Education 101. Those are the ones I watched. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. So yeah, we're almost done. As soon as I get the rest of this cleaned up, um, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use to seal the window frame, um, which isn't, it is a butyl product, but it's not butyl tape. Let me get done with this and we'll move on. So this is with testing the shims. Yes. We scored the inside of the window frame so that we could see where our contact point, the edge of our contact point was gonna be. And it looks much better than it was before. Now we're going to go ahead and put the seal on now that we know that it'll be making contact with the RV itself. So it's time to install. Especially because we're losing light. You guys look pretty dark. <laughs> wow, we have a lot extra too. Yep. <clears throat> so, you just run the bead of this um, foam butyl hybrid around the edge of the sealant strip inside of the window frame. And then you want the end of it to overlap about a half inch. So, I guess here looks good. I think it's about a half inch, Shane. Yeah, it's pretty close. So now you just trim this. Booyah. So now we have a solid butyl based tape bead all the way around. And make sure that the weep holes are at the bottom when you reinstall it and make sure that your butyl tape seam is at the bottom of the frame as well. Let's put this thing back in the RV because it's getting dark. Yep. A little higher, a little higher. Higher, higher still. There we go. You're on the shim. The shim right now. Okay, I felt that pull it in. So <clears throat> cool. 
While Dennis is working on sealing the windows and removing the old sealant, I am going to be handling the mold remediation. We do have some mold that we need to have addressed. So when we did research, we pretty much figured out that there was a really easy kind of DIY solution. We're gonna add one parts bleach to 10 parts water. Um, so we're gonna be doing three gallons of water to three cups of bleach. And then we're pretty much just scrubbing it with a scrubby toilet brush so I can get under the slide. Um, but we're going to aggressively scrub that and let it sit for about 10-15 minutes, wipe that clean, and then we're actually spraying it with vinegar um, because the bleach will help get the mold off the top, but it won't get to the spores or kill the spores. That's what the vinegar is going to do. So it's really important that um, you do the bleach first and then use the vinegar after so it doesn't continue to grow. And just make sure that you have gloves and a mask so that you're protected because you are dealing with mold. You don't wanna be breathing that in and be in a really well ventilated area. So we're gonna be turning off the AC, working in the hot 40 heat with the windows open so it's just not so fumey and moldy in there. We're also going to be getting a dehumidifier to pull all of the moisture out of the wood and try and dry out from where we had the leak. And we also got an ozone generator air purifier, O3, from Amazon that um, helps remove mold odor and mold growth. Um, it's just gonna kind of clean and purify the air. We'll keep that running for as long as possible. So let's get started. I'm ready to start sealing. I'm a little nervous, taking all the necessary precautions, follow the uh, advice of from a few experienced people with RV sealants are telling me that you should lay some tape down to get clean lines after you pull it with your finger. Um, got my rags soaked with mineral spirits, that way I can finger drag, wipe off the excess, finger drag again. But we decided to go with um, ProFlex RV sealant. It got good reviews on Amazon. Lazy Days had it in stock, so I bought it. Well, another pro tip is to cut your applicator tip at an angle. I cut mine a little too deep, but I'm just gonna have to take it really easy putting the bead on, because apparently you don't have to goop it on real heavy because you're gonna run back over with your finger and spread it out. All right, this is the test at this time. This is already kind of starting to glaze. But now I should just be able to rip these up because if the uh, sealant dries, then the tape will be stuck underneath and we'll have blue strips of tape underneath our brand new sealant. All right, the window install is complete. I feel real good about that. Because now, it's not supposed to rain tonight, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow afternoon. So hopefully this will have enough time to, gla uh, to glaze over and at least be watertight from the outside. I look like I've done a lot of work today, but really I didn't. <laughs> I did help get rid of the mold. I'm just so thankful, we're so thankful that it is a rather easy fix. Leaks can be a huge problem for RVs, especially if there's rot. And we feel so thankful that the subfloor and the walls don't need to be replaced. And honestly, rather cheaply. I mean, we splurged and got a dehumidifier and the air purifier, but we could have pretty much got this job done for under a hundred bucks, which is uh, really nice. So we're gonna continue with project uh, Watertight, or Operation Watertight, we're gonna finish sealing and scraping off all of the old sealant and putting new sealant so that everything is good. And then we're gonna start working on the roof to make sure that that is um, airtight as well. If you wanna know about any of the products we use to complete the install ourselves, DIY style, then go to the show notes below, click show more, and we'll have all the links to all the products that we got off of Amazon. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That way you'll get alerted every time we put a new video out on YouTube. And 
until next week, I'm gonna keep scraping on this bad boy. See these, see, see this gray hair on my chin? It's from Liz not recording when it's supposed to be recording. Liz not recording and RV problems. I didn't have any gray before we left on our grand design trip. Yes, you did. In my, in my face? In your face? Yeah, you're also three years older. I think this is like a food truck. <laughs> uh, I'll have an order of french fries, please. <laughs> you had sweet potato fries?